All right, here's my speed twin. I'm about to uh, put on the uh, Free Spirit uh, belt conversion. So I need to take off, basically, you have to take off the swing arm uh, to, to slip the belt in, right? Because, you know, on a chain, on a chain, you know, when you replace the chain, you break the chain. So, the, but you know, you can't do that with a belt. So the only way to get the belt in and out without, you know, uh, cutting it or anything, and, and if you cut it, you know, it's just toast, right? Is that you have to take off the uh, the swing arm to get it in there, um, and to clear to clear everything to get in there. So it's a lot of work, but at the same time, you know, you do this once and it's good for oh probably like fifty thousand miles or so. So so think about think about this is as a upfront labor. You know, you, if you read the uh, service, you know, not the service manual, the uh, the owner's manual on a Triumph, it says you're supposed to clean and loop the chain every 200 miles. I'm lazy, and I, I do like every thousand miles. But even then, it's still, you know, it's still, it's still work, right? You still spend X amount of minutes, you know, half an hour, whatever it is, to clean it and lube it and all that stuff. So think about that. Um, even at a thousand miles interval of uh, of uh, cleaning and lubing the chain, let's say ha take half an hour, 50,000 50, miles, 50,000 miles. If I do it every, every thousand miles, that means it's 50, 50 times. 50 times, let's say it takes half an hour. Uh, 50 times half an hour, that's 25 hours. 25 hours worth of cleaning and lubing a chain. Versus, right? Versus the belt, right? And that's uh, on top of that, you know, a chain gets dirty and it gets grimy and all that stuff too. Um, you know, belt stays clean. You never, you never have to worry about it. The only thing you have to worry about it, the belt is, you know, potentially that th there's always a possibility that a belt could snap. Uh, but then again, there's always a possibility that a chain could snap. So. But more likely a belt though. Belt's more likely to snap than a chain is. But uh But you know, belts are proven, you know. Harley Davidson's been running belts for a long, long time. And every once in a while you hear a belt breaking, but usually a belt breaks it's possible that it's a manufacturing defect. Could be one. Another possibility is that you get like a piece of rock that goes in between the belt and the sprocket of the belt. That could damage the belt as well. That's two things. And see the other thing is misalignment. Of the belt you know the front and rear sprocket it's not aligned and it's belt it's not you know basically it's not true with the, the two sprockets so it's a little bit off and that that could also damage and prematurely wear a belt as well so so those are the things but you know gear right you don't have to think about it and and the positive you know positive is that it's going to be a lot quieter because the chain is a chain is a lot noisier than a belt is uh so it's going to be quieter smoother everything's going to Hopefully we all come out all right. So anyways, so uh, to take off the, the swing arm, obviously you gotta take out the rear wheel. I take out the rear wheel. Uh, then I could loosen up the swing arm. But before I do that, I have to take off this cover right here. This cover actually holds this right here. So I don't have to take this off. I'm just gonna take this off and this is, these four are, uh, are 10 millimeters. And there's, I think, two, uh, two on top and two on the bottom, I believe. On this side, I had to take this off. Uh, well, not actually, not this piece. I have to actually, this piece is connected to this piece here. So to take this off, I, there's two bolts here. Those are uh, 12 millimeters, I believe. Uh, 12 millimeters, and that's that's the rear set, the, the peg and the rear set. Those things, so once this comes off, this thing will just kind of hang down by the shifter rod. That should be fine. Uh, but actually, before I do that, I have to actually jack this thing up. It's, it's already on the. Uh, rear stand but that's you know because i'm you have to take the wheel and the swing arm right so you can't use the rear stand so i'm actually i can have to get a jack jack uh, to jack up the frame down here and we can get started
luck has anything. I'm use a bunch of luck tide. I can feel it. You can see the luck tide coming out. Side. So, bolt with you for the swing arm. This side here. These four bolts here. Not sure I need to move this or not, but let's see. Take this one off first.
Okay, see, this is where the uh, coolant, that's the coolant, right here. it on something's holding it on let's see feel something oops jeez I was crying reach back here this is where the uh the chain is the chain is on the other side of this this right here this is this is the guard for the chain right here this piece let me back there and already touched all that grime already. So it looks like I might have to take these two bolts off that's holding the coolant. Can't see what's holding the guard on. These are 10 millimeters. One there, left one down on the bottom. There's only two as far as I can see. Can't see what's holding the guard. Okay, I see it. So I see one bolt right here. Is that the only bolt? I think it is. That might be the only bolt. It's this one down here. That looks like a number eight. Eight millimeter. I think I have to take off the brake mount here. Looks like here's the uh, uh, here's the nut bolt from the other side, and you guys can't see it. Let's do it this way. Just a nut bolt for the uh, swing arm. Yes, I can't see what else is in here holding this. Oh, I see the other one. Okay. See another one. Right there. Longer. Longer extension.
So just a little underneath here, just a little hook right here that hooks all the cables. So I gotta unhook it, unhook the cables. Okay, there we go. So there's the uh, plate. So these two were the bolts that held the uh, um, held the uh, coolant. And there's one, two, three bolts here that held this in place. And this hook right here was what held the cable in place down the bottom right here. Okay, so that's that. Set that aside. Oh, it's dirty. Look at my my hands all dirty now. She's getting kind of dark for you guys, I think. For me, I guess you'll see just fine. So from here, so look at this. Oh, it's not too dirty in here because I cleaned it up. Well, I mean, this bike only has 1,200 miles, 13, 11, 11 or 1,200 miles, so it's not too bad. But I, you know, around just around 1,000 miles, I actually clean the chain, clean and loop the chain. Again, I'm lazy, so that's why I do it 1,000 miles. Uh, you, should, you know, if you follow Triumph, manual they say to do it every um every 200 miles um you know in the past i mostly have hondas i mean i've had other brands too but but the majority of my bikes have been hondas and hondas has i think 500 miles to clean and do the chain so anyways it's pretty clean in there so i'm just once i get the, the sprocket off the chain off then i will wipe it down i'm probably gonna not gonna wipe it here because it's uh you know this is in the garage so i don't want to get the garage out dirty uh, so I'm just going to take a rag and just kind of wipe, you know, wipe as much of this crud off so I can. It's not actually, it's not too bad. It's not bad at all. So now it's just a matter of, I think that's all I need to do. So it's just a matter of getting the uh, the swing arm off. Um, and, and that's it. So now it needs to take off the back wheel. And I don't think you guys need to watch me taking off the back wheel. Oops. And you guys you watch me taking off the back wheel so so i'll do that off camera i take the back wheel off camera and i will s start recording again when i take off the swing arm all right so got the uh back wheel off also took off the bolts for the uh, lower the lower bolts for the uh shocks so the swing arm bolt here is a uh, 19 millimeter and this other side here is a uh 24 millimeter right here. So let's see. It's gonna be kind of tough right here. Hold one side and screw the other side. Oh, it's not too bad. It feels like it's about 80 foot pounds maybe a little bit less doesn't feel that much i think a little bit less than 80 foot pounds it feels like maybe maybe 70 foot pounds 75. i always know the feel of the feel of 80 foot pounds because that's the torque on the uh, lug nuts for the, for a car usually 80 foot pounds unless you know unless you have like a big old big old truck or big old van or something like that uh, but you know regular passenger car passenger vehicle it's 80 foot pounds so you know, i'm usually always spinning or torquing that that amount often enough that i, I could uh, i could tell the difference I, I have a feel for it basically that's what i'm saying Alright, so let's push this uh, bolt through here. Uh, let me get a mallet and push that through. Get a washer up first. Washer here. 
、まあ。Be a little easy with a magnet, but I don't have a magnet quite handy right here now. Okay, that's about as much as I can push it through. So it's cool that this thing is uh, hollow. Makes it a little bit lighter. Show the bolt on the other side is hollow. It looks hollow. I see a hole, but I don't see. Oh, yeah, it is hollow. So that's cool. So there's probably going to be some friction on this bolt as far as pulling it out because, because of the weight of the swing arm. That's, that's my guess. So let's see. Yeah, oh man. I can get it out. Pull it out. Let's see. Do I have something I could push it in a little bit further? Push it out a little bit further so I can get a better grip on it. is moving freely. Oh, it's moving freely right here. It's kind of pushing that in. I don't have nothing that could push this in quite properly. Let's see. At least nothing soft. I need like a dowel, like a wooden dowel. That would be perfect, but I don't have a wooden dowel. Let me see if I can use this extension without damaging that bolt. That's a that's a problem. I think this head will probably be okay. Or oh, I should put on a maybe I should put on a little head like a little small sprock, uh, small uh, socket. It's pretty flush. So this is a nine millimeter sprocket. I, I, I chose a nine millimeter because I don't think I ever, I've, I've never, I don't think I ever had to, uh, had the need to use a uh, nine millimeter. So we can't go any further because this thing, this way, this way is too big. Okay. I guess I have to get my smaller sprocket. I have a smaller sprocket right here, right here. Well, not small sprocket, but a smaller, um, smaller bench that could fit this better. Okay, this is a 10 millimeter, so I need to switch to a smaller one. Switch to a 7 millimeter. I don't think I've ever used a 7mm. I think this, thing, this 7mm is like brand new. 7mm and 9mm. Those, <laughs> those sizes. No one, I don't think they, I don't ever recall using that. Maybe 7mm, but I don't recall using 9. The only time I actually recall using a 9mm is for a. Uh, Adjusting the valve on on Honda's on Honda's uh, the tappet valve like the little the small small bikes like they're uh, like I think like on a Ruckus or or a uh, Grom any of those mini bikes they use they use a uh, 
nine millimeter for the for the tap it for the tap it uh, bolt tap it bolt head. Get that out okay so i think i could get the swing arm out maybe so the chain is still holding up the swing arm or holding holding uh, holding onto the swing arm i should say so that's out so let's uh let's get this boat out of here wow that's a big freaking head i'm not sure if i have one that's this big okay let's see what i got Okay, so let's say I do have a one. It's a 36 millimeter. So 36, this is the biggest socket I have. It's this one, it's 36, so lucky me. So I need to uh, unlatch the uh, locking washer right here. It's bent over. So let's see what's my little screwdriver. Let me see if I can kind of pry it open. What's that little screwdriver I just had? Here it is. So it's a little flat head. This flat head, the head of here is not even a you can't even use it as a, a for a flathead screwdriver anymore because it's so it's so it's, i use this for prying so much that that tip is just completely not square and not you know not good for using it on a flathead i might strip the flathead so it's working so i'm just sticking it in and i'm lifting it up That looks pretty good. That's close enough. I'm gonna get a punch right here, a flat, flattened punch right here, and I just gonna kind of push this slowly. Work the uh, work that washer. Work that washer all the way around. Actually, if you look at the washer, it's actually, it's not even flat, flat. It's like, uh, it's, it's like a cone shape. I'm not sure if it started out as a cone shape or not, or it got cone shape because this, this bolt, um, pushed it in and it, you know, and it made it into a cone shape. But anyways, the, so the original front sprocket here, it has a rubber plastic thing in my bob. This, that's for the chain. So that way it's makes it quieter. Without that, it's actually noisier. So, uh, let's see what I have there. So, I'm gonna have to use the impact. Impact. Hopefully my impact. Could, oh shit! God damn it. Hopefully my impact could uh, take it out. I'm not sure my impact will work or not. So, and that socket I have is not intended for impact, but I'm gonna use it because that's the only, that's the only thing I have. So you know, it's one of those situations where you make do with what you got. So the socket head is not an impact socket. No, the socket's not an impact socket, so again I have to make do with what I got. So here's my little impact driver. Let's see if this works. Hopefully this works. Come on, baby, work. Maybe I should have impacted this thing. I should have impacted this thing when the wheel was still on, when the when the bike was still on the ground. Dang it! Because I don't want to impact this against the against the uh, the transmission. I think that's a bad idea. Yeah, because right now it's in neutral. 
shoot let's see what am i gonna do i think i might have to put back the back wheel back on so yes i think that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put the back wheel back on and uh so that way i could connect the chain to the rear sprocket and drop the bike back on the ground so that way the the back uh the wheel will will hold you know because the wheel is connected to, on the chain to here the wheel will hold this still versus putting it into the transmission because again i don't want to put that impact on the transmission I don't think that's that's healthy for the transmission. Um, let's see. I, mean, I could try it, but fuck, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm gonna put the back wheel back on. All right, so I have the rear wheel back on and everything. I just take everything back in, the, all the bolts and everything, just to hold it in place. Let's see if this works. Okay, back to the 36 millimeter. Uh, chains on should be tight. Oh my god. Okay. Shit. That's when I need a bigger impact wrench. And I sold my impact wrench. My big one, like a year, maybe two years ago. Fuck. This one's not strong enough. This is my strongest one. So let me see if I could use a breaky bar. So I have my little breaker bar here. It's not that you no, know, it's not that long. It's only like maybe 18 inches. But we'll see. Shit. Okay, I'm not sure if I can take this out now. Okay, this sucks. Alright, let's see. So the back brake's still connected, I believe. Okay, the back brake's still connected. So I'm gonna put my foot on here. Put the back brake. Make sure the, the thing doesn't move. Ugh, Jesus. some movement but I think that was the uh I think that movement I felt was the uh maybe the wheel spin <sighs> what the hell dude am I spin it the right way let's see let me look at the threads yeah, I'm spinning it the right way. That's right. That's correct. Looks right to me. Check this little bolt that it came with. Yeah, that's right. Counterclockwise. Lefty Lucy. Let's see, Lucy. Righty tighty. Fuck. Why is this so damn tight, dude? Jesus. Do I need a. Uh... this out. I'll be right back. All right, let's try that again. So this, I need a freaking pipe is what I need. I don't have a freaking pipe. I was looking around for a pipe. I don't have a, a metal pipe that I can slip over this handle to give it, give me more leverage. So anyways, so put on my Rear brake, I have the front brake clamped. So, so hopefully the brake's not gonna move anywhere. Oh shit. Shit, did it move? Oh yes, got it. Woo. Oh man, that was hard. Oh man, this thing's stuck. It, it, it got. Shit, that was. That felt like it was over torqued. Oof, man, that was rough, man. Would have been better with a six point because this is a 12, 12 point. Uh, would have been better with a six point. But look at what I. So you saw me put my foot on the on the uh, rear brake, right? And it's on the chain, so that way you know it doesn't move. Uh, and the other thing I also did here. 
is I put it on a, oops, I put a clamp on my front brake. So that way the front brake didn't move. Because earlier, earlier, when I just put my foot on the rear brake only, that wasn't enough. It actually felt the, 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 uh, I actually felt the wheel spinning backwards really lightly and I was like, what the hell? Okay, so now I could put this thing back on the on the stand. So we now set it's actually on the uh on the kickstand, not not the uh not the uh right, not the uh jack or there's no uh rear stand. I took all that off. So it, so it's a little bit more stable because everything was you know the other way is less stable, this way is more stable. So this way is the triangle, right? between the front and rear wheel tires and the kickstand it makes a big triangle so it's more stable that way All right so let's put it up back on the stand and i would you know i won't film that all right so uh got the back wheel off got the uh axle off but uh but this this thing is still the swing arm can't come out because there's in, inside here there's actually a centering. There's actually a, like a centering bushing thing in here. You need to take it off, and it's actually it's like a. See how you can see, see how there's a. Uh, there's a. Let's see, you know, it's like a. Uh, God, what's, what's, what's that tool called? For this, it's like a little spanner wrench sort of thing. So it's uh, it's. You know, it's five millimeters by twenty millimeters, and I happen to have this <laughs> this freaking ruler that fits that. And hopefully, I'm hoping it's strong enough. So I'm not sure if it's strong enough or not. If it, if I bend the ruler, oh well. I have another one. This is just an extra one. So I'm not sure if this ruler is thick enough to to turn that out. Basically, like so, have it in there. Like so, let's just turn this thing. Oh shit! Holy cow! Oh shit! The thing broke. The ruler broke. <laughs> I had a feeling that was gonna happen. Dang it! Okay, I need something. Maybe I need to spray some oil on here or something. Because of the threads. Man, what am I going to use to take that out? I need to make something. This thing's too thin. I wonder if I could put two of these together. I have two of these things. Let's try that. Another one. So let's try this right here, like this. Put them together, like so. Hopefully, that's a little thicker, a little stronger. Hopefully, it won't uh, won't step on me. Okay, they're both in. Yep, they're both in. Okay, let's see if it works. Let's do it from this angle here. It's out of my way there. I feel like I should get put some like lube in this thing or something to give it a little bit easier time to spin. Maybe when I take it out, I do that. Oh, come on! Shit, it's not spinning. It's not spinning. Oh shit! I see it spinning. Holy cow! The thing that's really in there, dude. Fuck. I think I'll spray some penetrating oil or something. It feels like it feels really stiff. All right, let me grab some penetrating oil and spray it in there, and you know, I'll be back. All right, so I used some uh, coil. So this is supposed to be the best penetrating oil on the market. I've actually never used that particular brand before. It's funny, all these years I've been doing stuff, and I never used that. But that's what I. That's what. I, that's why here is it's the best the, the best on the market so 
I bought some, I think it was at least a year ago, maybe more, maybe a couple years now. And this is the first time I've ever used it. So let's see if it works. Spray it in there, I'm supposed to wait for a minute. I think it's close to a minute already. Let's get into this thing again and see what happens. Dang it. Ugh, shit. I don't feel it budging. Like last time I felt it budging, but this time I don't feel it moving. I feel the ruler bending, not not the things screwing things. Fuck. I'm not even sure what kind of metal this ruler is. It might be aluminum. No, it's stainless steel. It says right here, stainless steel. Man, I'm surprised stainless steel is not it's giving out that much. Well, stainless steel is actually kind of malleable. Shit. Shit, I see it. I see it like slightly moving a little bit. Oof, shit. Slowly do it. Slowly, slowly. I can see the, uh, the ruler is bending. The ruler is the one that's it's kind of bending and twisting. So I don't want it to break. Switch positions here. A bigger wrench so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use two wrenches well, i do have a bigger wrench but it's like way too big i don't want to take that chance i don't want to take a chance on putting too much leverage and basically breaking the ruler so i'm gonna use the smaller one it's two one two of them so i'll use like a t t handle Unfortunately, because the engine case is right here, can't really. <clears throat> can't get any closer than that. Spun at almost 180 degrees. So that's a good sign. And the ruler is not too twisted. So that's a good sign. That's a really good sign, I think. It's getting easier. It's easier now than it was initially. So my concern is when I put this back together, if I could get it back together tight enough. Okay, 
it's even easier now. Okay. Okay. Oof. I can deal without the tools now. Okay. Oof. So this is a center bushing here. They call it center bushing because it's a. Uh, I think this is what centers the. Uh, Swing arm or, or the whatever is in there. Loose. I think I could take the swing arm out. Feels loose. So, all right. So let's bring it back this direction. This direction. So now we just need to unbolt the. Uh, The uh, swing arm, the uh, shock spacers off. Oh, that's the shock spacer, the, the lower bolt, I mean. Hopefully, that was enough on there. Our right, center bushing. Let's see if it is or not. We will find out right now. So, this feels loose. Yeah, looks like it's coming off. Oh yeah, it's coming off. Okay, there we go. There we go. Oh, swing arms off. So here's, here's the ABS pump. You all want to know right there, that's the ABS pump. See how they, all the brake, all the brakes are on it. Right there, see all the brake lines. Right there up on top. All right, so let's go back here, back to the sprocket. Okay, so that's off. Let's get the chain out. Okay, chain out. The chain's pretty clean, I cleaned it up to, uh, a couple hundred miles ago, and I use and when I lubed it back, I use a uh, wax, a wax lube. I didn't use a. Historically, I always used a um, on that on that tool. I always used a um, God, what do you call it? Um, final drive oil. Use final drive oil, then then I actually started using Lucas chain oil. And Lucas chain oil is definitely better than the final drive oil. It's just more. Um, saying more um it's more tacky it's thicker it's more tacky it's kind of like uh kind of like bar oil you know chainsaw bar chainsaw bar bar oil so that's very tacky very sticky um let's see yeah so it's all grimy and dirty in here so i'm gonna clean all this stuff up right here so let's look in here right you see all the grime grime and dirt and all that stuff i'm gonna clean all that stuff off before i go further so uh so i'm gonna do that off camera you don't need to see me clean that all right so before i i uh, clean this up i actually need to cut this little part right here see how it kind of sticks out a little bit uh the the sprocket the belt sprocket it's really big so we actually hit that so you actually have to uh, cut that off uh, with an angle grinder with a little cutoff wheel so i put this little cardboard here so that way it doesn't spray the metal everywhere you know this is aluminum so it's gonna cut really easy um so yeah so i have to do that first so here's my angle grinder right 
put it in the cutoff wheel. All right. It's a battery operated one, so it's not as strong. So that's a, actually, that's a good thing. Um, Cause you don't want it to be, you know, you don't want too much power because that's just gonna cause problems. See, oh, this thing is not taped right. Shoot, I have to put it in this direction right here. Oh, Let's see if I can even fit this thing in here. Okay, I could fit it. I just had to take off the handle. Let's see. That was the best best way to approach this. So the, the direction that the that the uh, angle grinder spins is gonna shoot up. It's it's gonna shoot all the stuff up instead of down. So I have to. Sure, I could get it in the right spot here. Yeah, right there. I'm gonna do it right there like that. Man, those kids step all up on our face. So this angle grinder disc I have is kind of used up, so it's kind of small. I need to put on a bigger one. So let me change the angle grinder. Okay, one more time. This time with the bigger wheel. Most of the way, and the rest of it, I can just kind of peel off. Oh, break off, I should say. I didn't completely cut it flush. I can see it from here. It's kind of an angle, slight angle to it. So, I mean, what, what can you do, right? You can only do so much when you eyeball it. Yeah, I cut it actually a little past, past flush, which is, I think, okay. Uh, let me go in there and try to clean it up a little bit. Let's see if I can do that. Let's see. Oh, 
I'm not gonna clean that up. I don't want to use the angle right now. You know, use the file and just file the corners clean. But let's just, let's actually, let's look at it real fast. So you can see that it's, uh, see that I kind of cut it beyond a little past flush. So it's actually a little bit further in. It's actually a little bit further in. So there's a, there's a metal right there and, that, and it actually steps down. So I, can't, I actually cut a little bit past this. And you can actually, if you look at it really carefully, you actually see it's sort of angling inward. So it's like out here, it's, it's further out. And over here at the end here, it's actually in. So it's actually angled. It's actually, it's, 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 instead of being straight, it's actually angled in inwards a little bit. So yeah, it's kind of hard to do, you know, when you're just holding the angle grinder there like that. Okay, now there's freaking aluminum dust everywhere. So now, now I'm gonna go clean this up. Clean all this aluminum dust up everywhere. I, I'm gonna get the uh, shop back and suck all this up. Shop back should be the, it's the best idea. So I do that off camera. All right, so I clean it up. All right, um, so this is how I clean. This is my secret here. Just use WD-40. Don't spray this for WD-40, you'd make a mess. What you do is get a toothbrush, spray the WD-40 on the toothbrush, and use that to wipe, you know, scrub whatever, then, you know, and, and just keep on doing that. So you get all the grime out, right? If, 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 you know, because WD-40 is like a solvent. It, it dissolves oil or breaks it up. Oil and grease and grime. Then after that, and again, just use it sparingly. You don't, you don't use much, right? It breaks everything up. Then after that, you use Simple Green. Go in there and spray everything with Simple Green. Then sc and scrub it with Simple Green and probably maybe, maybe go over it twice with Simple Green. Don't rinse, don't rinse nothing. Just spray it, scrub it with simple green, then spray it again, scrub it with simple green, and maybe even three times if you want to. But I, I just did it twice. And after that, I came in with this, with some water and I, and I uh, sprayed it with water and, and uh, then I came in with an air compressor and look how clean it is. It's real clean now. Or I mean, it's not spotless, but it's it's pretty clean considering that I did it all with squid bottles. Right? So, so I have made a big mess right here in, in the garage. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's not that much water. But anyways, so the Simple Green, excuse me, the, the WD-40, Simple Green, and a squirt bottle. And I didn't even use that much squirt bottle. I only use like maybe less than half a bottle, maybe like a third of a bottle. And I had like about, you know, maybe no more than half a bottle here. Um, so, so, um, so anyways, it's pretty clean now. Now let's get into uh, putting things back together. So since the, since degreasing it, you know, took off all the grease from the, uh, from the shaft right here, right? Get a different angle. It's a bad angle. Well, this is a good angle for you guys, but it's a bad angle for me because the camera's like right in, right in my way. So anyways, I, since everything's degreased, I actually de have to grease up the spline right here. With grease a little bit on the spline and from there here's my sprocket all right the sprocket let me grease the inside spline of the sprocket a little bit just a tiny bit i think the sprockets are really greasy well not greasy but uh oily from a, from what i could tell it seems to be pretty oily already so it should be fine so just a little bit of grease nothing binds and such you know okay so now I can put this thing in like so Let's see. No. Like going in. There it goes. Okay. Let's see, that's in. This is the old uh, washer. I'm not sure you need to use the old washer or not. Uh, the lock washer. Because this thing right here. Let's see how, let me see how this goes in. So this goes in like so. So I don't think you need to use the old lock washer. Yeah, I don't think you use it. Let's put this in, in like so. Shit. Okay, can I get in 
it out now. <laughs> it's hitting the frame right here. Can't get it out. Oh, the thing's in gear right now. So yeah, so no, you don't use the old lock washer because I can see the spline. I can see the spline on the uh, on the shaft right here. And it's and if if that lock washer was in here, it wouldn't be able to uh, it wouldn't be able to fit. Okay. Oh, actually, I can't even do this because there's no space for the belt. I need to squeeze the belt in now. Shit. Okay. I think that was a mistake to put this in right away. Shit. Okay. Yep, that was a mistake. I should have pushed this thing in. I should have put the belt in first. Let's see. Okay, there we go. It in so easily okay so anyways <laughs> i need to get the belt <laughs> you get the belt in otherwise there's no space in there Again, the belt is a. Uh, look at the number here, so that way I can actually have this for my own record as well. So those numbers. So, uh, that's the belt. Let's unravel it. I don't know if this belt has a, any direction or not. I assume it doesn't. But I just, I mean, it's going to make it sort of way the, uh, the face of the belt. Or the number of the belt is in direction that I can see. Alright. So I just take this in. Man, I feel like I should grease this inside right here too. Just because... Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put a little bit of, add a little bit of grease in these, in these splines. I'm not sure if the instruction says it about greasing it or not. But I'm gonna grease it anyways in the future. You know, hopefully that way it doesn't get stuck. The sprocket doesn't get stuck too badly and... Uh, no, you're not supposed to have any grease on the, on the, uh, on the belt, I don't think. But you know, the reality is that, you know, when you ride on the street, there's always going to be grime and grit. You know, so there's no way really of preventing all that to get, you know, greasy and such. But anyways, I'm just going to do it anyways. Okay, I think that's enough. Just enough. Just enough. Shit, I still have a bunch of 
still have a bunch of aluminum dust all over the uh, all over the camera from the grinding. Aluminum dust does get everywhere. Okay, I think that's pretty good right there. You don't use the uh, old nut and uh, you don't use the old washer and stuff. So here's a new one. Uh -huh. I'm wondering if I should grease this this up or not. It goes in like so. Obviously, this you know, they. We put on the uh, the lock the lock washer from the factory. So I need to take this off. This is that looks like a five millimeter. Is that right? A torch, you know, looks like a five five millimeter. Oh, geez, it's not even a five, it's a four millimeter. Kind of hard to tell with the, uh, with the headlamp. Where the hell is my wrench? There it is. Kind of hard to tell with the headlamp then, do you? Yeah. The silver, the silver hardware, silver hardware with the headlamp reflecting on it. <laughs> it looked like it was a five millimeter. So this here, I believe, is. You want it to be uh okay. Actually let me uh grease up around here so in the future when I take this out it would be if you know if I had to take it out it would be easier. Like basically the interface of the nut going into here, right? Like so. Like I say, in the future, you have to take this out. Now I don't know if it's gonna, the grease is going to be there anymore. But just in case, if it is, it isn't. Grease the threads too. Just to ensure that in the future this won't be impossible to take out. It won't be all seized up. Okay, I'm not sure what bolt this is. Let's see, let's try the 36. I don't think it's a 36. No, oh, it is a 36. Okay, it's still a 36. Nope. Let's use my impact driver. No, uh, no, uh, no, no impact. Stop it. So I'm going to use my impact driver. I don't like that, but well, I don't like stressing the transmission a lot. But it is what it is. Let's see. Hopefully, my start starting my bob could still fit in there. Let's see. Shit, stop. 
Nope, doesn't fit. Okay. I think that was too much and too tight. It's too tight. I need to loosen it up just a tiny bit. Too loose now. Oh shit. This is best to just use a freaking wrench wrench. Use a wrench wrench and see how it goes. Let's see where's my where's my nut? Where's my nuts? Where's my nuts? Almost there. Just like another couple of degrees. Looks like. Oops, that might be too much. Actually, you know, it looks okay. Yeah, it looks okay. That looks okay. Okay, now we're good. Screw the ring, but I need to get some Loctite for that. Some new Loctite. New Loctite was my nuts. Oh my, I shouldn't say nuts, I should say bolts. <laughs> So it was just freely, so it's good there. So we're good. So kept this lock tight. Let's see, what's my wrench? What's my wrench? So this is a four million bolt. It doesn't need much not much torque. How long is like? I don't know. Not that much. That's it. That's all you need. Notice I'm holding it at the head, not 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 at the end of the handle. Again, this is only a four millimeter Allen. So that's it. That's all I need. Okay. So that's not going nowhere, that's not moving. Oh stick the belt on a little bit. Okay. Uh let's see. I think I'm supposed to take care of some cable management here, but I'll do that in a little bit. Uh, what else do I need to do? I need to put something right here. I can't remember what now. I think I'm gonna stick a swing arm back on. And uh, then take care of this. Take care of this other stuff. So let me figure that out. All right, so let's get the swing arm back on. So, uh, Well, it's pretty light. Make sure you loop the uh, belt to the swing arm. What you need to do is you need to insert the uh, insert the bolt to this side first. Just remember, we still have to get the, uh, the swing arm bolt, um, not the bolt, but the, uh, the center locking, the center centering mechanism. Just 
for the swing arm. So right now I'm putting back the bolts. Go back to the side here. I'm putting back the bolts for the, uh, the lower shock. So this is, you know, this is to get everything aligned back up properly. So get this in here. Everything just hand tight only. So remember, over here, this bolt here, not the bolt, but the centering. Push that back in there. That centering uh, part over here where I had a hard time with it. Right, remember, I used the two rulers. So now I need to use the two rulers to screw back so that way it's centered again. Otherwise, there's a little bit of slop. See the slop? Side to side. That's what we don't want. So let's put the centering. The centering piece does right here. that coil oil has worked its way in even more and now it's just it feels looser it feels like a lot easier to spin than it was spinning it out spinning out was that was hard spinning in is much easier probably so i think that coil oil has worked its way in finally see so, so now it doesn't spin anymore Just in case. I'm not sure how much to tighten this thing. Okay, I'm gonna, I don't think it's a good idea to tighten it very much. enough that seemed to be about where it was originally too it was uh, pretty much vertical originally so this thing's not moving anymore that's good so i think i think i tightened it properly so i'm gonna pull the axle bolt out and uh and set it back in the right side the proper side i should say all right so the axle bolt's out So it doesn't really move, yeah. So that's that's right. Seems right to me. This thing's just as hard to put in as it was to take out. Okay. okay. Alright, so back to this side. Okay, what's that axle? The bolt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, not the right one. Oops, that's the axle. That's that's not the. <laughs> that's the axle. That's not the. Uh, it's not the swing arm. Interesting. The swing. The axle has a thicker, thicker bolt head than the the swing arm. That's interesting. Very interesting. Let's see what it is. Here it is. So this should be it. Cause what is so here it is. Yeah. Washer. Bolt. So I think that was a twenty-four, right? Twenty-four millimeter. Alright. Yep, twenty-four millimeter. And the other side was a nineteen millimeter. what the torque on this thing is but i'm guessing it's probably about 80 foot pounds judging by the, by the size of the 
bolt and also by the uh, uh, thread pitch and everything. It wasn't that difficult to uh, to loosen. Good. All right, so that's in. Put the cap on so I don't have to worry about it. Huh. It's going very good. Hmm. I don't remember it being so loose. Maybe there's something else on top of it, holding it in. Okay. Oof, okay. Now for the back wheel. I still need to do some stuff up here, but let me do the Put the back wheel and get, get this belt off the ground first. I need to, before I need to do the back, or before I do anything with the back wheel, I have to take the sprocket out and put the, uh, put the new, uh, new belt sprocket back on. So yeah, actually, before I do that, I'm actually gonna wash the wheel and the wheel is filthy. You see how right there is clean. Where my hand was, it wiped, it wiped the dirt. So yeah, I'm gonna wash the wheel first. All right, so uh, I washed my wheel. It's not spick and span, but it's pretty close. So let's uh, get this out here. This thing could pick out this bolt. What the fuck? Come on now. There we go. Just, just like this duct tight. I want to put duct tight in here for now. I can feel a drag, a drag on the uh, on the boat. Yeah, some, some type of drag on the boat. I'm not sure what it is. Even when it's out a few threads, it's still it was still locked in there. Okay, that's out. The sprocket here. Let's see if I need to wipe this clean or not. <laughs> no, it's just wet because I just washed the wheel. The wheel's still wet, so that's okay. Let's see. I believe it is this side first. Oh, 
that's it. So I think this is like a locking nut. It's like a self-locking nut, I believe. Feels like a self-locking nut. Yeah, it is. I wonder why it's so tight. It's like one of those... I think it's the, uh, the nut itself. Oh, it is, it is, yeah, so these nuts. I'm not sure you guys can see it, but see, see that little round indentation right there? There's just nothing, and there's a round, there's nothing, that's round. So these are locking nuts. So that indentation was made after the threads, the threads been there, then they actually like hammer into that, and also the thread on the inside, it kind of deforms a little bit. So it becomes a locking nut. Personally, I don't like that type of, that type of, you know, cause it's like, it's really hard on the threads. I don't like that. I prefer, um, I prefer it to not be like that. So let me set it on the softest setting first. Oh, geez, that's way too soft. That's way too soft. That's way, way too soft. Let's just get these on first then. Yeah, it's way too soft. Right, so this is a three stage power, so I'm at power two right now. Let's try right here. This, uh, this head on this impact socket is bigger than, than the hole here. So I'm on the third stage. I shouldn't need this third stage. Let me go back to the second stage and make sure it's nice and square in there. Head right here, even though it's tapered, it's still a little bit too big. I can actually see it kind of, but I'm too, I'm, I'm not concerned about that. What should I really do is check how tight it is on a regular wrench. There it is. Let's see, Let's see how tight it is on a regular wrench. So, this is this was a 14. 14 shouldn't be that tight. Yeah, see, it's not that tight yet.
All right. So thing is, this thing is way bigger than the uh, than the factory one, right? But the thing is that you know the front sprocket on this was bigger than the factory one too. So it's not much you do about that. Like this, so it is what it is. Okay. Stop the screen. Put this thing back in. Uh, yeah, let's put this thing back in then. Let's see, I wasn't supposed to not film it, but I think I am because. You can see the belt coming here on properly. Hopefully. Hopefully I get it on properly. Okay, let's see. Right here. Alright. So let's see. Well, you know what? I need to I need to loosen this up. Cause I have no idea how how tight how tight it's gonna be. Let me let me get everything ready first before I before I record. Okay. So we put the uh, the chain tensioner all the way in. So give myself plenty of slack. Let me bring the brake line up in here. Afterwards, snap that thing in afterwards. So, what I need to do is I actually need to get the belt on the inside of the sprocket. Uh, I see it right there, right freaking there. Trying to get this thing up this way first. I wonder if I have a space. Get my feet underneath the wheels. My feet underneath the wheels, if that works. That usually works. And the no space. Nope, that doesn't work. 
caliper has to be in place. Caliper has to be in place first. Man, this pocket is so big that it's like I have even less space than the than the chain. Maybe I should take it off the front sprocket over here. Take it out off the front sprocket maybe. And then give me a little bit more slack. Nope. Nope, the butt doesn't have space for that. Let's see. Oh, that's what's chain chain guards get in my way. And what I was like, what the heck? What the heck's that in my way? I kept on having to fight it. Oops, that's a five millimeter. You're not sure if this if this uh, setup even works with the chain guard or not. comes up freely. What the hell was that? Keep, keep on getting tied up, huh?
taking way too long struggling with this damn thing. Let's see. Why is it stuck here? Oh man. Oh shit. Okay. Oof, man. That didn't work right there. Chain, chain guard doesn't fit. Dang it. I need a freaking chain guard. I forgot to order the chain guard. Forgot to order the chain guard. Jeez, grease everywhere. Grease is actually coming from the axle of all places. So the axle has grease on it, which is fine. No big deal. Let's see how the belt's all the way forward. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now the belt's all the way back. I still need to tension the tension it. Okay, I see that amount right there. Just about afterwards. Okay, this chain guard doesn't fit then. Take off the chain guard. I need to buy a freaking chain guard. I think I didn't order a chain guard, dang it. Wow, it's a tight fit. Woo! It's a very tight fit. <laughs> it's like a couple millimeters away from the from the frame, I can see it. But you know again it's not tension, so Yep, it looks like it's like two millimeters away from the frame. Okay, so let me see. Obviously, you're touching up, up the set the tension screws, and I, when I get near there, I will record again. I've got to turn on the camera. So, anyways, I gotta take out the put peg over here, uh, twelve millimeter and uh, six millimeter. 
Allen. This one is a 12 millimeter outside hex. This one's a 6 millimeter inside hex. The reason why you need to do that is you need to get to these two bolts right here. So these two bolts right here. These two, or at least at least this one for sure. This one here, I think also this one as well. Uh, there's some, uh, otherwise if you don't, uh, this hose right here will rub against the belt so the, so the, so the kit comes with the, uh, with the, uh, part for that to open that up and so this whole job is actually not difficult at all it's just it's a lot of work that's all you know a lot of stuff to take off and actually it's not even a lot of stuff to take off realistically speaking it's not a lot of stuff to take off at least I don't think so anyways yeah, I think I need to take off this Torx as well. Yeah, I think I need to take off that Torx. I need to find a Torx. Okay. So this Torx down here is a number uh, 40. 40 Torx bit. Right in there. So I took off, I took off this way. There was bolt holding this hose clamp. So I need to take off this... Uh, Torx ball here is basically it's a bracket. It's a bracket. That holds uh see how this thing holds. It actually also has a spring wire thing for, for the hoses and stuff right here. Okay, so that's off. Okay, now the bracket's off. Okay, now the bracket cures. So before, earlier, this bracket right here on the top of the bracket was actually rubbing on the belt. So, gotta take that off. Okay. So they actually give you a bracket that attaches in there. Let me dig it up. Okay, so they give you this, uh, so this is the bracket I took off. So I'm t I am took off the uh, the bolt that was right here that held the bracket. So they give you this this bolt and this nut. So you screw it on. I think what, what they're doing is they're putting it back in place. But because of the nut, it actually sits further out. So it doesn't touch the... Uh, um, so it doesn't touch the... Um, the belt. So let me put a little Loctite on it. Not too much. Just a drop or so. This is a, uh, looks like a five millimeter. Yep, it's a five millimeter. Let's see, where's the bracket go? In here. So, where am I supposed to put this thing? So, put it in the same spot. Exact same spot. It's just. With that with that bolt in place basically uh it basically pushes the uh the bracket further out so it doesn't touch the belt so that's a kind of a simple res simple uh, resolution i suppose Where the bracket lies, fix. It's gonna be more like this, more like that. Oops, it's more like that. So where's the other one? Oh shit! You know what? I've got to put this thing back in. God damn it!
forgot to put this wire where the bracket was. Wire was right here. This bracket, so that means this one was out. So, hmm, interesting. The bracket they they give you, it's the same size as the bracket that they took out. I mean, not the bracket, but the but the bolt. The only difference is this button head bolt right here. It's slightly thinner. Uh, it has a lower profile, I should say. I shouldn't say thinner, I should say lower profile. Oops, wrong side. Slightly smaller, low, smaller profile. So things like that. These gloves are getting so. For some reason, I think gloves are not tight enough. Let's bring it in a little bit further. Making it hard for me to. Losing my dexterity here. Okay, there we go. Okay, it's like that. Put a drop of Loctite back on here. Where's that Loctite? Where's that Loctite? Here we are. Back in. Where's that bolt head? Here. Damn it. Oh, shit. Ugh. Hmm. Okay, now it's 
need to figure out how to tighten this thing up. It's not good. It's not lined up. It's not lined up. Damn it, the camera's right in my way. Okay, I'm gonna have to move the camera. Okay, so we're back. So uh remember the cover that was here for the chain? The chain guard. So when we took that off, there was two bolts that held held it. One of those bolts is right in here. The held the hold that's holding this wire loom right here. There's a wire loom right here, right? This back up here. So there's a wire loom right here, so that's that bolt's used up. So the other bolt down here, you we we take the uh the little uh hose clamp here, here and we use that to basically grab this electrical cable that's right here and basically screw it in right there. It's getting late. I'm getting tired. Fumbling around with everything. Short time with this. It's uh, at least 10 o'clock, if not 11 o'clock. Just realized I haven't even eaten dinner yet. I only ate breakfast and that was it. On a positive note, the coolant hasn't leaked out. <laughs> but you know, who knows? For my luck. It might leak out. Okay, let's go right there. Knock on metal. <laughs> Say knock on wood, but knock on metal. Let's see, okay, so that's that. So that holds this place. Uh, I guess part of that bracket that was here, or that, that cover right here, might have held the cable hose right there in place. So let's look at this, how this looks right now. So you can see that uh, right, the cable is held in place right there. Remember the the bracket I took off for the hose here because earlier this hose right here was rubbing against the belt. So so basically uh, now it's not anymore. You see there's about four or five millimeters of clearance between the uh, the hose bolt right here and the belt. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but you know right there earlier it was rubbing against the side of the actually not not the actual actual hose, but like the the rubber part of the hose clamp right here, it was rubbing against that, so now it's not anymore. And my little wire thing right here is still, still in place. So it's in the proper place. So, so far so good. So now I think I need to just screw back the uh, right foot rest over here. So this is actually going a little bit faster than I expected. I, I was expecting this to 
take longer possibly, but I wasn't sure. Uh, okay, so this one definitely has Loctite in it. I can see the old Loctite. So I'm gonna take this, that, where's my screw? So the screw for the, for this and screw it back in. And uh, to break up the Loctite, break up the old Loctite. That's how you, that's how you break up old Loctite, old Loctite. Um, just, 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 just the screw that you came out from that. And just screw it back in, go in and out a few times, and the old Loctite usually will break apart. All you have to do is just blow into it. You, know, you need a compressed air, if you have some compressed air, or uh, if you're not, just blow into it with your mouth. That should, that should be enough. Okay, all the way in, now all the way out. impact driver would be so much faster. I think I have all these I have all these power tools but I never use them. Because I like to feel feel what I'm doing. So that's the problem with power tools. That you can't you know, when you use power tools you lose the feel, the touch of uh you know of what you're doing and you can't tell can't tell what's going on it's faster for sure but it's just it's way faster but you just don't have to deal with it you don't that's the problem i have with using power tools actually doing this it doesn't really matter This would be a total advantage right here. It was a six millimeter that was in there. Oh, this one looks like it has, I'm not sure if it has Loctite or not. I thought I felt Loctite, but I wasn't sure. I thought I wouldn't put Loctite in this one because, because it's a six millimeter. If you put Loctite in there, you might not be able to get, get it out <laughs> in the future. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel Loctite at all. Nope, I don't feel any Loctite. There's no resistance whatsoever. So I think they, they knew when they put this right here, they knew this you know this internal six six millimeter you know six millimeter uh allen key it's not gonna be as strong as this 12 millimeter external hex which is a six millimeter internal hex right? as far as getting stripped goes okay so that's good that's pretty clean let's stick these things back in so let's get that six millimeter first Some Loctite on this one before I forget. Oh, you need to clean out the thread on here. Where's my freaking wire brush? Oh. So I always clean the threads with, with the wire brush. Clean out the old Loctite.
Alright, so we have Loctite. Oh, excuse me. Um, Loctite on the new on the threads. Not new, but on the threads, I should say. using this adjustable wrench to basically tighten up this uh, this allen key Good. Okay, let's go there. All right, almost done. Put back the foot peg. Let's see, foot peg is always kind of confusing. Let's see, it's like this. I mean, it's this one's like that. Was it like so, I believe? Looks like something's missing right here. What's missing? This. That. Where's my... There's almost a pin right here. Many things I was... Foot peg, peg is always difficult to put back in because of that stupid spring. Feel right. I just not feel right. You know what? Because the spring is not loaded. To so load the spring one way around is alright. One way around, two ways around. The spring does not go that way. Oh, you know what? The spring is on the outside, not the inside. Spring is on the outside. Not the spring is not in here. The spring is out here. Out here. I think because the spring loops into that, like that. Like this I think is that right? No, no spring is on the inside. Inside or outside? What the hell? No, that's not right. What does this thing hook, hook onto? Should hook onto something right here. Oops. One side of this side. side and see what, how the spring is in. Dang. I always get confused by these springs. Okay, I was right. It doesn't hook onto anything. I was right. It does not hook onto anything. It just pushes on onto this. This way he just pushes onto the like that.
Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's right. What the heck? What's going on? I think I'm just getting tired. All day. Shit. I actually didn't start on doing this until late this afternoon. This right here needs to be on the other side, not this side. What's the problem with that? Well, there has to be a tool for this. There has to be a tool. I know I've done this thing many times before. Or well, similar many times before. I don't think I've had such a hard time. Yeah, I think I'm just damn tired today. I just am tired. Oh man, taking forever. Okay, finally got it in. Jeez. That took way too long. 
way, way too long. God, how long did I fiddle with that? That was like a good 20 minutes or something. back in place. Let's see. We got some more brackets here. Let's look at these brackets real quickly. Know what's what. Okay, so they actually part of this kit they actually give you official genuine tri triumph parts. So that's cool. That's the first time I've ever seen that. Usually, whatever company they always give you some generic gas. Oh shit, I just lost one. Oh, oh, sorry, lost it. Just two spacers. Two spacers, four bolts. Um, that bracket right here. This bracket. Oh, you know what? This is for the uh, this is for the uh, the reservoir, the, the coolant reservoir. So I'm gonna show what these two are for. Right here. Let's see how this goes together. All right, so I'm just gonna bring this up to the coolant tank here. This needs to go. Let's see. Okay, this is on top or on bottom? No, this is on bottom. Just bring that. Is that right? That's all right. I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Don't worry, man. You know what? I think it's like that. Like this. Things like this. Yeah, I think that's right like that. For these ones, the nuts, as you say. Is that a 10 millimeter? Yeah, it's a 10 millimeter. Oops, shit. Jesus, that's all this aluminum dust. All along all the parts here. Not the say. So it's interesting that this the bolt here that came on here, yeah, it's like it's like a gold dip. I wonder if that's like some type of a coating for it. Probably is. Can't screw this too tight, right? Because you're screwing up, screwing against the plastic, the plastic reservoir. So that's why it's a lock nut. So that way you don't have to like screw down real tight. You just, as soon as you reach that, that plastic and you're, you're done. So it doesn't damage. It doesn't damage anything. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I have it just in the right spot. The hole right down right here. 
in the hole up on top, up right here. Looks like they lined up, so that's good. Okay, now the last thing is this thing. Let's see, I'm not sure what's the orientation it is. And also these two bolts right here, or these two spacers, I should say. And the four bolts that they give you, or oh, the four bolts they give you, I think it's to replace the four bolts right here. Because I think these ones are longer. I think so. Let me see, let me look at it real fast. All right, so here's the original cover with the four uh, four bolts that's still there. So we don't we, we don't use these bolts anymore. These are basically uh, not long enough anymore. We take these off. So let's look at uh, what we got here. So uh, we we'll have to do actually. I think uh, I'm not sure how they did it. So basically the reservoir comes on uh, on the cover here. Like so, so let me just let me get off top right here. So the hoses, seems like the hose is not, not quite long enough. Goes in here. Okay, so let's see, you guys, you guys can probably see this. Let's see, so it goes in like so, right? Like so. And then you put the spacers. I need these two spacers here. Let's, see, let's get these two, let's get these bolts. Actually, let's compare these bolts to the original bolts. See the length, see that? So the new bolts are longer than the original bolts. So, I mean, these are still Triumph official, you know, OE Triumph, so not a problem there. And I'm really glad that they, that the Free Spirit did that because that's, that's a big deal, I think. Let's see. So these spaces right here, there's two of them. One's thinner, one's thicker. Dinner, yeah, let's, let's take all these bolts out. My, my nasal passage feels like it's clogged up. My voice is sounding funny. Sounds like I have a cold almost. I think because I'm face, I'm, I'm bent over. So, anyways, so there's a thicker spacer and a thinner spacer. So, the bracket here, remember, there's this bracket. So, the Thinner space it goes where the bracket is, but it's down down on the bottom. Okay, so uh, let me stick that on and I'm gonna do it off camera because you guys can't see nothing right now anyways. Okay, so this is interesting. So this this bracket right here, the holes in here are threaded, or at least I see threads, but the bolts that they give you don't fit. The original bolts don't fit either because the original bolt is the same, you know, it's the same thread. It's just difference in length. That's it. So that's kind of odd. All right. So this is basically how it, how it comes together. See the four bolts on top and I see the two bolts on top and two bolts on the bottom. It basically comes to like that. So the space, those, those spaces on the bottom, they actually have threads. So they don't move anywhere, but these ones don't. So that's kind of weird. Anyways, uh, the way that it's in set in right now with the, the bolts all the way in like this, I don't think I have enough room to uh, to screw them in, so I had to like take the bolts out of air. But but it's, this is just for you to see. All right, so I took out the foot pegs again. Uh, a hell of a time screwing this this thing on with the with the brake right up there because because remember this thing is out now. It was like just seems like it was interfering with uh, getting this thing on straight. So, uh, so anyways, so I took the, the foot bag out again. Um, but after that, after that was you know out of the way, everything else just comes on pretty easily. It's pretty easy right now, anyways. So, let's 
funny the instruction for this thing says to put the foot pegs on first. But boy, that was I was having a hard time. <clears throat> so this thing does sit out again it does sit out like an extra i think eight millimeters outwards so so i'm not sure if that's gonna it shouldn't interfere with right here but this would be out and if your boots right here <clears throat> you might notice that but i can live with it i can live with that actually looking at it right here i don't see much much uh, scuff from the boots at all so all right so i ran out of batteries from the last clip then was i got everything in got everything buttoned up and i was adjusting the butt tension and i realized that I was adjusting it wrong. The setup was wrong. So, uh, so you have to look at the, uh, the 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 pivot point right here, right? The swing arm. Oops. Swing arm pivot point right here. Which is the center of the front uh, pulley sprocket, rear pulley sprocket. Center of this. You draw a line from the center of this. To the center of that, the pivot point right here should cross in that line. Should be also centered with with you know with a straight line. So everything everything should be in a straight line. All three. If it's not, then then your measurement won't be right because when all three are in a straight line, the center of all three is in a straight line. That right there will be the longest point. Uh, the longest point, which will be would be the tightest point on the belt. So you have to think about that. So if, if the suspension is need to compress more, where where the wheel is is higher up, and also this this pivot point right here is below the center line, or if the suspension is not compressed and it's and it's standing up as tall as it can stand, then that means the pivot point would be uh, above the center line. And when that happens, the two uh, because remember the the, the swing arm is pivoting from that pivot point right here, right? This pivot point. So, so the think about you have to think about that. The more this wheel over here neither goes up or down. Think about if it goes all the way around. If it goes all the way around, that means it's getting closer to this to this front sprocket, right? The center of the front and the and center of the rear are getting closer together. So the only time that they, they will get further apart is if that straight line goes to all three of them. Okay. So okay. With that said. Now the belt tension on this is pretty similar to the belt tension on uh, on uh, a lot of uh, other uh, bikes, like 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 a Harley, for example. Uh, so you basically you're pushing up on here. You know, find find the center of, of the belt between the pulleys, right, between the sprockets, and uh, and you're pushing up ten pounds, and it should. It should only uh, move 10 millimeters. Uh, so this way here is softer than, no, that's definitely softer than 10 pounds. So I'm gonna move my, uh, my piece more. Well, 
my, uh, what am I saying, my piece, I mean, I mean my uh, chain tensioner. That's feeling a little firmer there. And how I actually had to, uh, I actually had to uh, take off the lower shock mount on one side. See this? I had to take off the lower shock mount on one side. That's the only way I could compress, compress the, the uh, you know, and bring the swing arm up so that way everything is in line with each other. So once that's co connected, that way I can still be on my spool. You know, so that way there's weight on here. And I'm actually putting two 45 pound weights to be able to compress this spring, uh, 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 shock on this side, the spring on this side. Uh, otherwise, you know, it will, it will pop higher and, and the the uh, the, the uh, suspension will extend, right? The wheel will come, go down, extend. And that means this the pivot over here will actually be above the the center, be, be above the the center line of of the two uh, the two uh, pivot point or the two uh, uh, sprocket centers. Um, so yeah. So so I think I'm pretty close to where where it should be, as far as I can tell. So, I was like, I wasn't sure how much 10 pounds is. I was feeling, I'm like, oh, that's pretty close to 10 pounds. But the cool thing is I have some, some uh, barbell weights, right? So you take the barbell weights, you know, they come in 45, 35, 25, uh, I think 10, 5, whatever. Anyways, they come in a bunch of different weights, and ten pounds is one of them. You know, ten pounds is or four point five kilograms. And I basically I held held the 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 that plate that weight with my two fingers. I'm like, oh, ten pounds is a lot heavier than than I realized. So so I came back here and like so now that's why I'm feeling it now. So I'm like, okay, this, this feels about ten pounds in here. Yeah, that feels about ten pounds. If I go any tighter, it's going to be uh, too much. Actually, because my axle is not screwed in. Let me double check, make sure I um, I have the tightest the tightest point on the belt, because because just like a just like a uh, just like a uh, a chain belts will also have a tightest spot as well. The difference is that on a chain, it'll it'd be more obvious the tight spot. Whereas on a belt, it's not. I think around here is pretty tight right there. So let's try that again. So my belt's at uh, seven and a half centimeters. When I push it with about 10 pounds, it should be six and a half centimeters. Yep, yep, feels about right. So usually, right now, now I, I could tighten up the, uh, the, uh, the uh, axle, but the thing with, when you do that is that usually when you tighten up the axle, it will actually get, usually the tension actually gets tighter. So, did I just freaking change my? No, I didn't. Usually, when you, when you tighten up the axle, it actually gets a little tighter. So, you have to be mindful of that. So, I'm gonna tighten this up. Okay, 
double check the, uh, the belt tension again. Hopefully it doesn't feel like it's too, too tight now. So again, seven and a half. Yeah, it feels okay now. It feels pretty much the same. Okay. So again, this this is a you know this is a brand new belt. So after I ride it, you know, x amount of hundreds of miles, uh, I have to double check the, the tension again. Maybe a hundred miles or something like that. Um, the other thing you want to check is the alignment of the belt. So with the alignment of the belt, you know, you check the uh, the belt right here. Can I look at look at the belt? How it's centered on the uh, on the uh, how it's centered on the uh, and how it's centered on the um, the rear rear sprocket or the rear pulley, and you should not want to jump off. It, it sh shouldn't want to go one way or the other. It should just stay stay put. And you hear a little bit of noise. What's happening is the the ins. I'm not sure if it, because this is a brand new belt. That's why it's making that noise. Brand new belt and brand new uh, back pulley or back sprocket. And it's making that noise. Um, you know, even made that noise. I actually changed the, uh, I adjusted the, 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 the two sides on the, on, the, on the tensioner, on the swing arm, and the belt was like coming out, and there was like maybe f four or five millimeters of a gap. So, so on the inside, there's no plate, there's no shoulder. On the outside, there's a plate, a shoulder, right? That retains the belt, whereas the inside doesn't have that. If you look on this side, you see that the inside doesn't have that, you see the belt. So, uh, so the funny thing is that I was uh, I, I adjusted it like four or five millimeters over, and this you, it was very obvious here. And when I did this, it still made the same noise. I'm like, what the heck's going on? So, so I knew it. it so that's why I'm thinking it's because the belt's new, and the uh, and the police everything's new, so it needs to break in a little bit. So that way it seats the two the, the two will mate to each other better. Um, so uh, anyways if the belt or not the belt but the pulley if the pulley is going this way, you know, angling at the front of the pulley is angling in what happens when, when when that happens is that the uh, let's see if the angle the angles in you know the wheel angles in that means there should be a gap down here on the outside of the of the belt so the belt should want want to go in that direction I believe or is it the other way around anyways. Uh, so I think that's where it's at. I'm gonna I'm gonna play around with the right now both both because I actually measured you know I actually twisted this thing all the way all the way in and back out. So right now both of them are, are in and and back out all the all the same uh, the same distance the same same amount of turns uh, on the on the uh, adjusting screw. So it potentially it could still be off you know the manufacturing. Of, of the swing arm and all that stuff, you know, it could be slightly off, so so you can't depend on that. So I'm gonna play around with it a li little bit more because right now it's even. I'm playing around more, see if I could uh, get that sound to go away, and also um, you know make sure that the belt is uh, is set, you know doesn't want to move this way or that way in or out. And obviously with the shoulder, it'll stay there. It doesn't want to move out, but but it, it potentially could move in. So I'm gonna see if I'm gonna see if, I'm gonna try to make it move in, 
adjust it so that it moves in, then then adjust it so that it slowly moves out, slowly, slowly moves out until it uh, until it almost touches the you know, almost gets in here. But uh but you know, it's kinda of difficult I guess. Uh but anyways so I'm gonna spend time doing that and I I'll do it off camera because it's gonna take a while. Uh speaking of belts, you know, I look at my zero right here. It's made the same exact way. The inside has no shoulder. Outside does have one, or the 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 piece. And this thing is like it's pretty much right up against the uh, the wall the wall right here. The face of the uh, of the uh, of the shoulder. So I don't know. You know, let's see where it is. But anyways. So that's a pretty damn big pulley too. Look at that pulley, it's ginormous. Same with this one. Actually, I think the Zero has a bigger pulley. Anyways, so that's it. Uh, after I do this, I'm gonna button this back up and I'm done. Um, uh, and I'll, you know, after I break it in and everything, I, I'll let you know how, how it feels and how it rides. Hopefully everything goes works out all right. Thanks for watching.